So we're getting back on our American pacemaker compound and what you've been seeing me do is, is uh, get it cleaned up, just scotch bright and some lubricant there, try to get any of the surface rust back off of it. And we've got the uh, surface stoned right there. And the next phase of what I want to do is apply our cross hatch pattern with our power scraper. And that's what I've been doing with this cast iron surface plate. You can see my little practice runs there across it. And I'll uh, be getting a little bit better at it, trying to get a more uniform pattern like this one right here. It looks pretty good. And uh, that's why I kept, kept doing this. I probably run three times, three or four times across this plate, trying to get a good pattern using our uh, Biax uh, power scraper right here. Okay. And the purpose of what we're doing is applying this pattern to these bearing surfaces right here is to not... Not, we're not doing a full scrape where we're going to be scraping this surface and scraping that surface to mate them and uh, to give them the print. What we're doing is just applying this crosshatch pattern to help with lubrication. And this pattern will be on this surface and this is going to be upside down. You don't want to put this pattern on that or your power flaker because it looks pretty because you can look down and see it. but that's just gonna to add to the wear over the years. We're just putting it on this surface right here and what that's gonna do, it'll kinda of break up the surface a little bit and create more points of contact, but it's also gonna create all of these little valleys approximately two thousandths deep or so that's gonna help hold oil and hold lubricant to lubricate these sliding surfaces right there. It would be awesome to do a full rebuild on this, but it's, it's honestly, it's not necessary for what I'm doing. I'm not interested in that. I want to get it put back together so that we can get on the machine and move forward with our uh, pacemaker rebuild and start making some chips on it. So hopefully I can duplicate this over here to these two surfaces and I've got it stoned. So if I, if you look closely at the reflection and the shinier spots, you can see we've got good contact on here for being 80 years old, we still got pretty good contact. So it's not like it's uh, completely worn out and it's not gonna work. This surface right here isn't used very much and typically when it's used, we're only moving just a little bit because we're using it for threading or, or offsetting a little bit. So let's give this a shot and see if we can make this pattern look like that right there. Well, that wasn't too bad. We can definitely do better, but I think that worked out pretty good. I put a, a brand new um, 15 blade on there, 15150. So we'll um, we'll switch and go the other way.
Well, I think that went better than I was uh, hoping for there. It could be better, but I think it worked out pretty good. When you uh, kind of get down into the reflection and see the pattern, I think it, it's pretty good. It's, it's always tricky getting the angle right. If you're trying to come off of one edge and go exactly 45, it's uh, depending on which way you're, you're swinging the, the scraper, can be a little tricky to get to get lined up on a perfect angle. And it, and it helps too, like when you're practicing, sometimes I'll, we'll put a square butt on there and a sharpie and you can make you some lines to follow. But I'm trying to move on from that. We did that in school or in our training class anyway. And I uh, just wanted to kind of do it without having those witness lines. But that works, that looks pretty good right there. And we're gonna leave it just like that. I may end up touching up a couple spots along the edges you know, trying to time it so that you come right on the edge and come off and you have to lift off so the blade doesn't hit the corner. But we worked out pretty good right there. So I'm happy with it. We're gonna flip it around and uh, repeat it on this side here. All right, we got to go back the other direction. Um, I'm happy with it. It's looking pretty good. So let's just keep it going. One more pass and we'll have this done. Pretty well matches the other side. I'm gonna come in here and touch up the uh, the edges just a little bit, a few more spots that I kind of missed, and uh, this will be done. So if there's any doubt, if we're actually move, removing any material, you can see all the chips down inside there. So like I said, we're taking approximately two thousandths out of that every time we uh, every time it comes down and hits it. So what we'll do is we'll clean it and uh, we'll hit it with our flat stones from here to kind of get, you have to stone it to get rid of the burrs there.
So here's our gib. I got it uh, scotch brighted and cleaned up right there. And on the, uh, the sliding surface, you can see this was hand flaked or hand scraped, should I say, but these are flakes uh, for oil. Same thing that we applied to this surface right there. But these are still, you know, these are plenty deep. There's no reason to go over this surface and do the same thing again. So all I've done is uh, just scotch bright it. And I can tell that there's a couple thousandths uh, arc in it. So it's not 100% straight from one end to the other, but it's really not bad at all. And I don't think that it's gonna uh, cause an issue on the, uh, the movement the sliding motion right there. But if I need to, I will take and do a little straightening on it on the table. Basically just clamp it down to the table and you can pry up on it a little bit. You keep indicating it until you get it nice and straight. Just putting a slight amount of pressure on it to basically bend it. But I don't think it's necessary. So we're gonna go with it like it is for now. And as I get this thing assembled and, I, and we test the, the fit, it's really easy to just to slide this thing right back out and do any kind of modifications we need to on the gib. As I said before, I'm not going in for like a full rebuild on this. We're just cleaning it up. Main thing is we replaced our screw, our nut, the bearings for this. This thing should be sliding just as good as it was whenever it was built new. So real happy with that. So I'm gonna move over to the bottom piece that mates up to this and just start getting it cleaned up, scotch brighted, so that we can move on to our assembly. So this is the bottom side of the compound, the lower half. So this is what fits onto the cross slide of the machine there. We've already got it scotch bright. Just use our red scotch bright and get it cleaned. You can see where over time there's been a couple of chips that got caught up in the surface here and was pulled down. That's normal for any machine tool. We used a uh, mill smooth file here to draw file the corners just to remove any kind of burrs that were uh, raised up there over the years. You know it getting bumped around or as it's being rotated chips getting caught up in that edge so move that there and now we're going to use our precision flat stones again on this surface here to go ahead and we're going to see if there's any raised areas this is a really good uh, way to do that so i can instantly feel along the edge here that you've got some high spots you can feel a little bit of high spot there over here I can see the high spots along the edge there. Definitely got some uh, high spots there. The corners is typical for, you know, the, the metal getting deformed and moved. So you got a high spot right there. You see on this side, a little bit of high spot right along this radius here. There's a chip there, that, or, you know, an indention where a chip got stuck in there. So what this will allow me to do is kind of work these high spots, but especially along these edges. And what we'll do is use the file, just use the, the mill smooth file to kind of make sure that those high spots are just filed down. It doesn't, you don't need much just to kind of get it below the, the surface there. And then come back in and you can check it with your stone and it's not rubbing that corner there now. And I'll do the same thing over here to this side. Kind of a bad position here, but I'm just kind of giving you an overview of what we're doing. Come in here and just, I can see where that corner was hit. Just working that corner a little bit. And we just about got it, but I gotta go along this edge. I can see right along the edge here that we've got a little bit that we need to remove. So you can just use the file in a draw draw file pattern here and keep checking it to see if you got it. We got a little bit more that we need to do there. And just keep working it like that. We've got some more spots down, down this side right here. But the, uh, the stone polishes that high spot so it's really easy to see in the reflection and you can tell where you need to uh, work it. And it usually doesn't take much. So that's what we're doing. I'm gonna continue working on all this surface here. We wanna get it nice and smooth. Probably do a little bit more scotch bright on there to kind of brighten it up, clean it up some. And then uh, we'll bring it back when we move on. I wanna do some more cleaning on this piece here. Maybe some wire brushing on this outside where it was originally painted and try to clean some of that up there as well. 
I've been working one half of it here. These two holes had some burrs on both sides, so we filed that. We've got it stoned so that you can slide the stone on this, this half of the uh, surface there, and it's not, there's no high spots there, but we still got this side. And I believe this is gonna be the corner that's typically hit the most, you know, over the years this is being used whenever you wanna rotate this over, you know, whoever used it, a lot of times they loosen the bolts up and you get that hit with a hammer, even maybe with a, you know, soft blows over the years, it still moves this metal there. So this, uh, this air right here is still kind of raised up just slightly. So I gotta do a little bit more draw filing, but this side is nice and smooth there. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it around to this side so that we can continue work on it. So now we're gonna be back here on this corner right here. Yep. Just a little at a time. Try not to scratch it too much there. And that's already feeling good right there. We've got to do these two holes there as well. That's what that sound is there. I'm hitting those holes. One little spot still in that corner. A few licks with the smooth side and that's doing pretty good right there. We've got a spot right here. It's shiny. Lay it just about flat. Do a little draw filing. Polish it. A little bit more. A little bit more. And that's looking pretty good along that corner there now. We do the same thing with these holes. High spot high spot and then I can see a high spot there too lay it flat and just try to put it right over that hole give it a few few licks and it feels like we got it already there so it's not hitting the high spot All right, that's, that's feeling good all the way around it now. I think we got it. All right, so both the uh, top and bottom pieces are cleaned and ready to go. Uh, I've got them oiled down good. We've got our SP350 coated down there well so that we don't have to worry about any more uh, surface rust accumulating on them. But we're gonna continue on. Now that both of these pieces are done, we're gonna move over to the rest of our component parts here and I need to get all these guys cleaned up right here. I wanna do some wire brushing and polishing on all these and uh, get some of the surface rust off of everything. We've gotta get our, our shaft there polished, get the gear polished, everything cleaned up. There's our lead screw that we machined, our lead screw nut. I've also got some new uh, ball oilers right here that we can install. I've got one more to remove, this guy right there. I gotta get that out and then we'll put all new ball oilers in there. These are, uh, I believe they were 5 16 in diameter, by the way. So that's the next step. Let's get all this cleaned up. There's a little bearing housing, so it's got a lot of surface rust on it. Just want to get everything polished up nice, and then we will start putting all this back together.